yeah, thanks so much, guys, for joining us today. Um, this is probably like the single worst day for crypto and Ethereum and NFTs in general in a long, long time. Um, it's actually pretty crazy what's going on with the market. But um, that actually doesn't really affect us at all. Um, so Pixels is still building. Our mission doesn't change. Our vision, vision doesn't change. Um, and we're still sitting at about like 12 months runway at the current status if we make no money. So Pixels will be here bare minimum for a year, but for a lifetime because we have so many things that we're building, so many things that we're about to ship. And uh, the team has made such a crazy amount of progress over the last um, couple of months. And um, the team's actually just about to turn the corner too. So um, you'll notice we've brought on like a good amount of people onto the design team over the last like couple of months. They've had all this creative energy that they haven't been able to like ship out into the game. We've just finished like the biggest parts internally to kind of turn that corner and get all these creative juices out to you guys and out um, to be shipped. So um, it's a huge, huge month coming up for Pixels where you guys are going to start to see some of the uh, like after effects of that. Um, I myself actually just like started diving into the coding a bit again. Um, I helped build out some of the tooling for our designers, but now they have like a whole set of suite or uh, a whole suite of tools. Um, that it's coming into their hands where they can just be shipping out content to you guys, shipping out new art, shipping out new quest lines, shipping out new characters, um, new worlds, all of that. Um, while we finish up building this alpha and this beta, which we're shooting to release um, right around mid-September. So mid-September, that's like not the confirmed date, but it's like roughly the date that we're shipping out the uh, beta version of our game which is going to be the blockchain-backed version of our game, basically meaning that we'll have like a full core game loop that's um, play to earn um, and completely shipped out to all of you guys. So we're super excited about that. That's uh, that's the day that Pixels becomes like a legitimate play to earn game. Um, that's what we've been saying this entire time that we've been building. Um, we wanted to get to like the level where Axie Infinity was in terms of like build, feature set, all of that um, around like September last year, if you guys have been following that space. So basically a fully integrated token, um, sound economics, um, and um, like a complete game. Except this game's going to be pretty polished um, and pretty fun. So we're pretty excited uh, to get all of that out to you guys. So um, yeah, I know this space is crazy right now. I know there's like a lot of FUD. There's a lot of uh, like hard things going on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Pixels, we're staying true to what we're doing. Um, this downturn doesn't affect us at all and we're still super excited and energized and like honestly i think the team is more energized than ever just where we're at with the product and where we're at with um actually shipping stuff so yeah we're excited to get stuff out to you guys um and there's so much that we want to share it's like all getting put together um all of this is getting orchestrated so super super pumped um and with that being said um i'll bring on jesse right now so um, I'll give you guys some background on him really quickly, um, and then I'll let him go into like a little bit of uh, like a blurb and a talk on what he's up to, his philosophies, his approaches, and what he's contributing to Pixels. Um, potentially give you guys some time to answer or ask him any questions, and then also we'll probably open to like a few questions, um, just given everything going on right now too. Um, at the end of this as well. So um, yeah, super excited. Jesse is our sound designer. We brought him on, I think about a month ago. Yes. Um, yeah, a month ago. Um, he is extremely experienced in this space, has like a ton and ton of experience. He's actually part of a game house really early on. So game house is um, a game studio that was built in like the early 2000s. Um, they kind of like created the casual game industry. And um, we actually have like acquired a good amount of their team members. Um, so it's kind of funny. We're kind of like a game house 2.0, or if I guess if you're on brand, <laughs> like a game house 3.0 from Web3. <laughs> I like um, it. But yeah, Jesse um, is bringing on like a ton of polish into the game. Um, and also, he looks a lot like Keanu Reeves. I'm not sure if he <laughs> likes me saying that, but I just need to bring that up every time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you only knew how many times in the course of the last five years I've I've been called uh, John Wick, uh, Keanu, or uh, have been walking down this. I was in Las Vegas a few years ago, and um, some woman was about twenty feet away from me, and she screamed, and she covered her face, and she pointed at me, and I was like, "No, I'm not Keanu Reeves," and then she walked away. 
So I've heard it. I don't mind it. I mean, it's it's not the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you look like Danny DeVito. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, could be a good thing, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would love to hear your take on sound design. Like, okay, I guess what we can start off with is like, maybe you can explain to these people why sound design is so important to building a good game. Uh. I mean, my, my, my personal take on this is especially a, a project like pixels is, um, that, um, it's clear when I first saw it, it's clear to me that this is going to be something extra, extra special. This is going to be big and it's going to be amazing. And so, um, every, so like everything that you see on the screen needs to have a sound and everything needs to have a voice. Like, I mean, just every, every, every great game that anybody ever plays, it's like, it's, it's like um, most of my hardcore gamer friends, like they love the music. Like they listen to the music. Uh, they listen to the soundtracks, you know, and, and uh, I've been doing this for so long that over the course of, you know, when we started a game house, when, when we were just, you know, sort of the inventing the, 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 I didn't invent it, but you know, the casual game space was being invented or created or, or whatever. Um, the audiences were, were relatively small, but over the course of my career, over the last, you know, 22 years, the audiences, my, my reach to audiences has extended um, from, you know, 20,000 people back in 2001 or a hundred thousand people to, you know, multi millions, like literally hundreds of millions. And so with that, um, when I got the opportunity to work on work on pixels, I was just, my thought was, this is going to be a world-class game and this needs world-class audio. Like it needs to be top notch. Like every song is singable, hummable, delicious earworms, uh, all the sounds are what you would expect and more in terms of like the, the, the feedback that you get when you click on something or you, you do something, you participate in something. Everything is just delicious and complementary to the physics and the art style. Um, and, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the story of the, uh, of the game, which by the way, I just have to say, I know I'm. I know I'm long-winded here, but um, I love chip tunes and eight-bit music. So, being able to do something like this—that's a little like I'm trying to elevate it a little bit and be a little bit more. I, I don't know, Luke, if you've heard uh, some of the samples that I did over the weekend, um, but I'm trying to, you know, create a little bit more. Like it's chip, chip tunesy. It's eight bit bit esque, um, but I also want to bring in some modern music production techniques um, to this to to this project because I think it deserves like like to be fresh and cutting edge and and um, I'll say it again, delicious. I love that word, delicious. <laughs> uh, that's never how I would have described sound. Um... But yeah, no, I heard some of the music. Um, like overall, like oh my god, guys, the amount of polish this game is about to get. Um, we've been like overhauling the art. Um, obviously putting a ton of time into uh sound design. Um, I was just on like a two hour brand meeting today. Um, it's all really coming together. It's gonna be like a very clean, um, and like polished experience, which I'm super excited about. Because right now the experience that you guys have, it's cool. It's definitely not delicious, like Jesse's describing. Yeah. Um, we're trying to uh, raise the bar of quality that we're shipping out to you guys. So um, we've like assembled this crazy team. Um, like I don't think you guys understand because you guys haven't actually met all of them. Um, this is like your first time talking to Jesse, but I truly feel like you guys. I think just hearing Jesse speak, you guys can see like the quality that he's bringing to the project. Um, Jesse can speak on behalf of uh like the other designers and stuff that we um, brought on, but like, you know, it's like a top tier team here. I agree. I, I, I totally agree. And I, and uh, over the course of the last uh, month, the progress that's been made is uh, astounding. 
Um, I was talking to a friend of mine last night who's in the games industry and also uh, in in uh, into uh, Web3 gaming. And I was telling him, you know, I was like, we like it seems like the team has hit a stride, like we all know what we're capable of. And we're now at that point where we're going to start riffing off of each other. And because, you know, like the art. The art affects what I do. What I do inspires the art. What I do inspires the developers. Like, you know, like everybody, you can't get away from the fact that there's art code and there's sound. And to make a good game, you know, you, you've got to be present with all with all aspects of, of the game, even, even the branding, you know, like I, I watch... You've been paying attention to, you know, what, what, uh, what's been done in terms of branding. And, you know, I think it's important to, to consume all of this information because it will, uh, inevitably affect the quality of my work in a positive way. Like the more I understand about the game, the more I am friends with the members of the team, um, the more I look at their work and, and, and assess it and, and, and look at it, um, which is a huge part. Uh, parenthetically, it, um, staring at art is a huge part of sound design because um, I, I got some art a couple of weeks ago from one of the artists and I just basically sat there and I stared at it for about 10, 15 minutes and I'm, I'm like, you know, like, what is the color? What does this particular color of green sound like? What does, you know, what does, you know, what does this neighborhood sound like? Well, you know, if I'm in this neighborhood, what do I hear? You know, what do the, what do these characters, what's their voice going to sound like? If they, if they have a voice, is it, is it, you know, well, so you, I, I stare at a lot of things, which brings me back to the whole concept of like everybody paying attention to what everybody else is doing and, um, you know, being involved that way it m is going to make an extremely uh, great game, highly polished game and um, delicious. Delicious. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the whole idea. Um, like, we are... Yeah, also, if you're in the Discord, feel free to post questions, and I can read them out a bit, too. But yeah, that's the whole idea behind the, um, like, work that we've been putting in. Um, like, a lot... We're not hiring, like, a sound guy off of Fiverr, you know, who's gonna, like, spend 10 minutes making a loop. Um, we're putting a lot of care and effort into the experience that we're creating and crafting. Um, and that's kind of been the idea behind this beta version that we're shipping to you guys too we want and just in general to like build a blockchain game that actually attracts the public um like the quality of the game has to be a lot higher than what's currently being delivered in this space um we're bringing people who are native to the game industry who are like masters at their craft and it's not like we're um like purchasing pixel art off of um like unity's asset store or um it's not like we're um like yeah just outsourcing this to fiber we're putting in like a lot of intentional care into create uh the experience that we're crafting so yeah it's been super exciting with that um so if you guys have any questions feel free to pop them in the discord if you have any for jesse um oh here's one good question um jesse what's the difference between a musician and a sound engineer a sound engineer uh, an audio engineer and a musician um, yeah. Well, I mean, they can be one and the same, and they can be totally they can be totally different. I know um, audio, you know, engineers who are not necessarily musicians, but they're really great with their ears. They know where frequencies are supposed to go. They're really great with uh, with uh, processing instruments and vocals, and and uh, you know the spatial relationships between all of uh, the instruments and stuff like that. Um, and a musician, you know, there are, I know a lot of musicians who have not so much anymore because, because, uh, things have changed quite a bit in the last, you know, two decades, but, but, um, uh, there are a lot of, you know, uh, musicians who, uh, you know, they, they don't know about, uh, the physics of sound and, and, uh, they don't really, you know, really care to know about the art of recording, 
um, and uh, engineering a mix and, you know, that's that sort of thing. So um, what is the difference? I guess, I guess uh, if you're looking at the broad spectrum, one would be somebody who's just totally dedicated to uh, sitting at a board or, or, as they call them, a desk and sitting there tweaking knobs and, and working with, uh, with uh, all that other, those other things I was talking about. And a musician can be uh, somebody who's busking um, at uh, Pike Place Market here in Seattle. Yeah. I have a good question for you. So what would Uh-oh. you say separates um, a game with like average sound design um from a or uh what separates a game with average sound design and a game with um great sound design or like what what's the difference like why why does it matter that much um i would say that that uh i think it's i think it's really about um i think it's about leadership it's about um communication and it's about you know all of the all of the you know various team members like i said before like communicating on the same level and allowing somebody like myself to use years of experience to sit here and you know to understand um you know that that um that what you know what we're trying to do is create a really fantastic immersive experience for somebody and um you know that i I think um good like great audio design um in a game like pixels is going to be audio design and comp music composition that uh underscores gameplay and immersion but also kind of like uh, stays out of the way of, of gameplay to a certain extent because I don't I think that there's there's uh, there's a delicate balance between um, having things uh, be too noticeable or or you know maybe in a wrong frequency or something along those lines but I think it's I think it's really about like uh, it's also about finesse like understanding what that is um, understanding how to uh, to pull back when needed because sometimes sometimes uh you can write a, a a great piece of music and it can just be like really like over the top and great but you might strip out all of the uh percussion and all the drums and stuff like that and you've got something that's that that's actually hits the mark um so your question i guess i guess it would be i, I guess it would be um yeah, I mean, it's for me, it's Luke. It's such a collaborative effort. It really is such a collaborative effort. Like, you know, I, I've worked with companies that um, they don't want the audio team, or you know, they don't want the art team to be talking to each other. Like, it's like, oh, you know, go talk to the project manager or you know, the product owner or you know, whatever. And I've always been an advocate for going directly to the animators or the artists or, or um, you know, the developers, because when somebody's developing, especially, I mean, take for instance, the, the art, like um, when they're making art, like I'm, I, I'm pretty sure they could, they're listening to music when they do it, but they're also probably hearing something in their head. And so, you know, like I always, ask the artists like so what do you what do you think you know because i think it's really important to get everybody's opinion about about music and and the sounds because i mean music is such a personal personal thing and you know like i think collectively uh we with all this you know input we can we can through me we can make something great through my through my experience but but with with uh with you know inspiration from every everyone else as well i don't think i answered your question did i no but that was great (laughs) that was really good um yeah like part of the idea of like why i thought it was so important to bring in really good sound design into pixels is like the type of game that we're building too where it's like you know you're supposed to feel relaxed you're supposed to feel like good and at home 
and um like music that you add really really affects that um like sound design is one of those things where you notice it a lot more when there's not thought put into it would you agree with that statement uh yeah and i also you know one of the things that about pixels that's going to be really important that's that is like my my main goal at this point and we haven't really settled on it yet um but i hope to in the next week or two is a melodic motif like a melody because as soon as we have that then that can get like spread out through the game in various ways, you know, through, through, you know, key changes and, and, um, you know, modally and it, it can, it can just be a really effective tool at, at, uh, at communicating, uh, good things and not so good things and mysterious things and secret things and, and, uh, all that. And, and I, I, once we get that done and there's the, there's the, the melody line of, of pixels, I guarantee you it's going to be one of those things where you, by the time we get to be, the beta stage, um, everybody's going to know it. And my goal is to, you know, to, to have a soundtrack ready, ready to go by, by beta. So we can release a soundtrack. Amazing. So yeah, one thing that people don't realize too, and I've seen it in this space, I don't want to call out any other projects is like sound design like just implementing it is actually kind of technically complex it's not just play this sound play that sound um how sounds interact with each other how they um like overlay on top of each other like getting mm -hmm. that right there's like it's not easy uh, so yeah it's also like a dev effort to you to make sure that all these sounds mesh together um we're like bringing in the right libraries to do that but it's like yeah there's a lot of coordination even just on the tech side um to go into that too okay so i think um, we have a few more questions too. We, oh, we actually have a sound engineer, um, who asked the question. So, um, I think they wanted you to elaborate a bit or just like explain it a bit more. Um, they said the music that you mentioned eight bit, are you saying this might be a new spin on like nostalgic classics? Um, kind of like elevating that eight bit music, that warm, fuzzy memory feeling. Yes, Absolutely. Because, you know, like 8-bit chip tunes and 8-bit music has been, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a thing, you know, like people seek it out and it, it's still, it, it's still, a, 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 you know, people are creating it. And I have my, like, I've done 8-bit games before and, and chip tune, chip tunes games before, but um, I, I have a certain, I have a certain thing in in my brain that I, I'm not quite sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet, but that's like part of the process is, is having, you know, a ton of tools that can do a wide variety of things and then say, okay, so how can I make this sound uh, like some chip tunes coolness, but update it and elevate it and, you know, make it to where like somebody's going like, uh, just yeah, I just create an earworm. So yes, the the answer to that to that question is absolutely nice. Um, so yeah, then some people are asking like the uh, depth that we're going to go into and the like what we're adding sound on. Um, they were like, oh, are you activating sound by walking or like scrolling over items and stuff like that too? Um, it's interesting. I can speak on this a little bit. It's like that's one of those things where like sound like footsteps and things like that on different materials that's like the easiest way to add immersion into a game and it's so noticeable once you play games without that that it's kind of missing something and it's like such a value add that you can add when you do that like can you can you speak a bit about like the depth of um like the environments and stuff like that you, that you want to add sound to or like the scope of what you were thinking about in terms of sound design yeah um just just for instance um the so one of the ways that i present um you know my ideas uh you know audio design ideas is is all i um this weekend i uh did a video capture and then i mean and and if, if i'm sure everybody here has played pixels so there's there's there are some rudimentary you know um tracks in there but there are no environmental sounds. And so what I did is in order to 
present my ideas, my musical ideas to the team, it seemed kind of ridiculous for me to just put these musical pieces in a video where I'm walking around without an ambient with with it out without an ambient loop of of you know like uh like uh a f like being in a park something like that and so i i threw that in there and kind of dropped it down low so that it was it was it was audible but it wasn't noticeable and then i decided you know i think i should probably just create some footsteps and so i created a a, a quick um uh, a series of of walking on grass walking on uh, cobblestones and then I, I i kind of scoped that out and then i animated uh I, I created sounds for for all the walking that i did around uh uh terra villa and it really you know presenting the music in context with with those footsteps gives it a completely different feel on one hand um you know, it's, it's like, uh, you could take the music out and, and, um, you know, you, you kind of feel like you're walking around and, and it, and it, and it's great. And you feel like you're doing something. It's very tactile, um, feeling. Um, but then you put the music in there and all of a sudden it's like, it's, it's lighthearted and it's, and it's, and it's a, it's a good vibe and it just, it just feels different. So my, my, my thought is to give everything that's interactable a sound and that's going to be a lot, it, it will be a lot of work, but um, I'm here for it. Like I, I can't wait. Amazing. So awesome. Cool. So I think what we're going to do is if you guys have any more questions for Jesse to um, post them in discord um, and we can answer those too. I'll also give like a few more updates on um, where we're at. And if you guys have any other questions, um, about anything else about what we're up to um if you have like anything you want to like just dig into um i'm here i'm down to answer it post it in discord um i can give you guys some updates on metrics too i just opened up the analytics page um so there are 13 people in the space right now but we had 7,000 unique users play this game last week um so this sound design that we're doing will have a pretty immediate impact already um and the idea is when we're looking at this user base that we have um we want to make sure that this user base is like as engaged as possible that we uh, can retain as many users as possible and then we uh start this growth um expansion which is coming really really soon um when people first see this game we want to get them hooked in immediately um so yeah we've been i've been saying like we've had 2,000 daily active users for the past um like month or so um but then our weekly active users is higher so we actually have like seven thousand weekly um unique active users so yeah those are all unique users right now um quite good numbers for where we're at especially pre-alpha um without any of this polish without any token into the game um and what's super exciting is in september we're having a game where yeah you guys haven't seen any of the uh, polish that we've added yet, but that's coming. So you're going to have a much better version of the game and it's going to be blockchain backed coming out in September. Um, so that's why this whole team is super excited. That's why we're still extremely bullish on what we're doing, given everything going on in the space. Um, even with everything going on in the space, our daily active users have not dropped. Um, so that's a really good sign. And that's the idea too. Um, the whole idea behind the play to earn space and our take on the space is we need to make sure that people actually like the game that we're playing. We need to make sure that we have a good experience for them. And the more time and energy that we put into these pieces, um, things like sound design, things like art, things like um, really good game design, um, the better spot that we're going to be in. Um, so we're super, super excited about it. Um, so in terms of sneak peeks about all the sound design that we just talked about, um, you're actually going to um, get like a tiny, tiny taste of the sound design in the rewrite. That's shipping on Monday, it's looking like, potentially Wednesday. Um, the dev team basically has it done. I'm trying to get them completed today, end of day today. Then I want to give them two days off, ship it on Monday, have it good to go. That's kind of the plan with them, this rewrite. Um, <laughs> we changed the music in the rewrite um, to be ambient noise that Jesse had uh, recorded. I think, did you... <laughs> 
Was that your sound that you recorded, or did uh, Gar just add that? No, that was that was mine. Sweet. <laughs> Heidi said no dates. Um, well, Heidi's not here. I'm sorry. I'm I'm dropping alpha. I'm I'm leaking stuff. No, this rewrite's basically wrapped up. Um, dev team should be shipping it on Monday. Um, I think that's like relatively confirmed. Um, there's no major bugs in it. Um, they're um, like testing the final features today. And then the idea is we have this completed end of day today. And then they take some time off, get some breathing room. We ship it on Monday. And then um, they get to start working on these alpha features. Um, in terms of the roadmap, um, what it's looking like that we have left is... Well, I guess, yeah, let me, let me pull up roadmap. So I guess I can paint you a picture of what this alpha is going to look like or what this beta is going to look like that you're getting shipped and then kind of talk about the uh, longer term roadmap. So this beta that we're shipping, um, it's going to be in like kind of a narrow category. The idea is we want to have like a pretty polished product and that means we want to keep the scope down a bit. So we don't want to like get scatterbrained, add too many features, push back the ship date and have all these different things that we need to, uh, like polish out. We want to make sure that the experience that we have is good. It's clean. It'll attract people and it just feels nice to play with. Um, it's not proof of concept because it's going to be a real game. It'll be like a core loop that's completed and um, like you're going to have fun playing it. But there's a lot more that we can expand on to after that. Um, and what that's going to look like is going to be, you know, it's still up in the air, like what the long term of the game is. Um, but it's also going to rely on like a lot of community feedback too. So that's kind of the idea. Games are iterative and you guys are here you guys are playing the game um we want to take in your ideas so i know handbag pop off he's uh he's on this chat um in this space and in this discord he really really wants combat um so there's going to be things that we experiment with and explore um and potentially that would make it into like a future loop um we're not i think the take is like from your perspective, I'm anti-combat. No, I'm not anti-combat. I'm pro shipping a game and getting this out to you guys. So, like, I have to be the bad guy sometimes and be like, is this, like, in scope? Is this, um, like, going to be able to make the cut in order for us to uh, actually ship a good game that's of quality that we want? Um, because there's so many different pieces that we need to be thinking about. But um, basically, the idea is we're going to ship this beta. It's going to be more, it's going to feel more like Stardew Valley um, in the initial game mechanics. So you'll have these farming mechanics You'll have these like building and upgrading mechanics. Um, and that'll be like generally what we release in beta. But beta means that the game is not complete. Beta means the game is in progress. There's more to grow into. And um, that is not where the uh, vision ends. So immediately once we finish these um like alpha and beta features, um, the work is going to go into uh, expanding and seeing what other features that we can start building. So um, like you're going to see now that we have this engine done, now that we have all this tooling done, we're going to be able to move pretty quickly and be able to test out and like develop features quite quickly too. Um, yeah, personally, I do like the Clash of Clan like idea too. Invading farms, stealing crops. That's like definitely being talked about on the game design side of things and on the um, on the uh, like potential roadmap. But we're still building out together. And that's going to be something that we build out with the community too. So. I mean, if you guys are begging for something, it's so stupid to ignore that on our end. Um, like, what we want to do is we want to build a game that people want to play. Um, so we're going to be, like, a bit analytical with it. We'll be looking at, like, what the actual data says. Um, okay, how are people interacting with these features? How are they, um, like, actually using them? And then we're also going to be taking feedback from, like, our most loved, um, from our most loyal fans, too. Like, you guys are super users you guys are super fans you're showing up to spaces you're being here um you guys are the people that like our project the most so obviously your opinion really matters to us too we're obviously going to listen um so with that too there's gonna be initiatives uh, we're about to ship um like an internal version of this rewrite and this alpha we're probably going to open it up to uh, some community members too and um what is the truth is like the people that are here and listening to this now you guys probably are super users and um, we probably do want your feedback on what we're building so um expect us to be like doing some kind of early access program um getting you guys like a bit of like looks into what we're doing and then we're going to want your feedback on all of our decisions too um so the idea is build with our community 
Um, we're in a really awesome space and like a really awesome position where most games don't get this. They build this, they build their games. They don't have an audience um, that's like ready and like begging for features or um, for uh, new mechanics. Um, and we want to take full advantage of that in this process. So definitely, definitely expect that. Um, okay, sweet. Well, I don't know if we have much else. Um, if you guys have any more questions, post them in the Discord. Looks like Jesse's been answering some stuff in the Discord too. Um, but if that's about it, I think we're going to wrap this up quite soon. So if you have anything else you're dying to say, get it out right now. Um, we'll give it like a minute. Um, but otherwise, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Jesse, thank you so much for hopping on. You're an absolute pro, absolute legend. <laughs> I think uh, this was fantastic and I'm and, uh, glad to uh, have been a part of it. And we should do it again. Oh, 100%. Yeah, this was super fun. Okay, with that, uh, I guess I'll say goodbye. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Looks like we have one more question. So are we going okay. back to sprints after the rewrite? This is just one I'll answer really quickly. Oh. So we do sprints internally. Um, what we realized when we were like trying to build out this um, like rewrite of the code base is that sprints are really good for internal use. We want to do a mix of building in public and then also making sure we ship something polished and finished. And the building in public stuff, I was realizing that I was actually adding this really weird pressure on the dev team to uh, ship out features before they were ready and before they were like fully designed. So like games work a bit different than software development. We're trying to find a good balance of like building in public, getting feedback and um, like shipping stuff out consistently. But I will say um, now with all of this tooling, you're going to get content much, much more consistently. That is something that we can get on like a pretty regular schedule. So um, sweet. Thanks so much, guys. Tiff out. Web3 Guild. Let's go. Um, <laughs> shout out to both you guys. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Take it easy.